OK, well, anyway, what I was so eloquently saying was that x squared minus 12x plus 27 greater than zero has a somewhat different meaning than x squared minus 12x plus 27 less than zero. And both of those have a different meaning from x squared minus 12x plus 27 equals zero. So let's talk about the three possibilities. This is code. This is math code right here. Greater than zero, less than zero, equals zero. OK. Um, I'm, going, I'm going to write the translations. OK, x squared minus 12x plus 27 is greater than zero is translated in the following way. Where is y equals x squared minus 12x plus 27 above the x-axis? Question mark. No, I want to erase the question mark and write something else first. I'm going to put in parentheses the x-axis. The x-axis has the equation y equals zero. So that really what this says is where is y equals x squared minus 12x plus 27 above the line y equals zero, which of course is the x-axis. Um, then, x squared minus 12x plus 27 less than zero, has the translation, where is y equals x squared minus 12x plus 27 below the x-axis. which is the line y equals zero. And then finally, x squared minus 12x plus 27 equals zero has the translation where is y equals x squared minus 12x plus 27 touching the x-axis. The line y equals zero. And when we use the word where, well, you'll see. So let's go to the problem at hand, which is this, the blue one. And let's write out where, where, where is the graph of y equals x squared minus 12x plus 27 above the x-axis? 
Well, I'm going to put empty zeros here. Not zeros, they're empty circles. Because we're not looking at where the graph is touching the x-axis, but just above. Only, only above. That's kind of, yeah, that's better. Okay, the blue lines, that's where the graph of x squared minus 12x plus 27 is above the x-axis. So how can I say where? I say where it's happening that the graph is above the x-axis by saying where on the x-axis this is happening. So I'm going to draw a parenthesis because I'm not including the point where the graph is touching the x-axis. And then the part of the x-axis that matches up with this part of the graph that's continuing to move up and out to the left forever. And then over here, parenthesis, because there's an open circle there, out to the right forever, because this arm of the parabola is going up, 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 and to the right forever. So now we just need to figure out for sure what the points are uh, where the graph does touch the x-axis because the way you write this is going to be negative infinity comma this x-intercept or zero unioned up with that number to infinity. So we just have to find out what those numbers are. So we're about to do that. The parentheses mean that X is not equaling those numbers. But here, just to the left of this number and just to the right of this number is where the line begins. So it's where the interval begins. So we need to know what these numbers are, even though we're not going to use them. So x squared minus 12x plus 27. Mm. That lets me find the points where the graph is touching the x-axis because they're going to be my endpoints. And it looks to me Now let's see. This is positive 27. 27 equals negative 9 times negative 3 or positive nine times positive three, but the negatives, negative nine plus negative three, equal negative 12. So I'll put a minus three here and a minus nine here. And then I'll solve for X. X minus three equals zero. X minus nine equals zero. Add three to both sides. You can do this with your, your eyes shut now. You have become experts. Plus nine, 
plus 9. x equals 9. All right, so what does that mean? That means that this point is 3, and this point is 9, and so I'm going to put a 3 there, and I'm going to put a 9 there. And so to write this a little more neatly, or a lot more neatly, the solution to this inequality is negative infinity to three, that is to the left side of three, unioned up with from the right side of nine to positive infinity. And that's what I would write in the answer box right there. The interval on the x-axis where this goes up, unioned up with the interval on the x-axis where this goes up. So more and more and more, you're learning to translate math code. That can be a very valuable asset in your life. No matter what your major is, no matter what your future career is, every Every discipline, we call these <clears throat> disciplines. Every discipline has its own code. You've got to learn the code, the jargon, in order to be able to fully function within your discipline. This is practice. Unless you're going to be a math major, then you get to speak my language. Okay, discussion about this. Okay. Okay, now we have this, and I'm going to write it larger again so that you can see it, or maybe I could do this. Maybe that's more visible now. Maybe it's not. I'm going to write it anyway. <laughs> Stop. X squared plus 4X minus 23 greater than or equal to X minus 5. Let's put this into English. Where is? Y equals X squared plus 4X minus 23 above, <clears throat> above or touching y equals 
x minus 5. Let's make a picture. Here's y equals x squared plus 4x minus 23. And here's y equals x minus 5. Oh, got it. Yeah, that's very cute. Thank you. Zoom. Zoom six. Ooh. All right, I think I should just shut this off for a minute and shut it back on. Okay, now one more time. Let's see what my window's doing. Okay, graph. Okay, let's go a little lower so you can see where these intersect down here. Um, there now. Up on the X axis is where these guys are touching. Let me let me copy it over there so I can mark it up. Actually. That's what you get when you get um, used to something. I found out that this stuff peeks through. Okay. If I leave something written, then when I flatten it, it peeks through. Totally unfair. Okay, let's draw a picture of where x squared plus 4x minus 23, which is a parabola, is above or touching x minus 5. Now here's the line x minus 5, y equals x minus 5. Here's the parabola, y equals x squared, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Here's where they're touching. And here is where the parabola is above the line y equals x squared, blah, 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 blah. Now, what we have to do is try to figure out exactly where, what is the x coordinate of that point? because that's going to be uh, the left the left end point of that arrow and then the right end point of that arrow might be this number or if I were able to draw straight up would it really land there Okay, so that, oh, and it would be brackets. Like that, because we're saying above or on. 
This might or might not be easy to find the X coordinates of these points. For those of you who've used the graphing calculator a lot, there's um, a utility called intersect that you could use. However, we're, we're, we're just not using that in this class because there's no time. No time to teach it. So, what we really need to do is translate this problem into an equivalent problem that's easier and quicker to solve. I'm going to do that. Right, so x squared hmm. plus, all right, I'm going to write it here. x squared plus 4x minus 23 is greater than or equal to x minus Five. I can do something to get an equivalent set of expressions that's, to make it easier to solve. Now, equivalent expressions are not always easier to solve, but this one will be. Um, I'm going to move everything over to the other side and so that I get a zero over here. So minus X plus five so that X minus X is zero and negative five plus five is zero. But of course I have to do the same thing over here, minus X plus five. I don't know, zero greater than or equal to x squared plus 3x, 4 minus 1 is 3. <coughs> 23, negative 23 plus 5 is negative 18. So now we have an equivalent expression asking where this equivalent expression is above or on the x-axis. And we know what to do there. So let's do it. Let's use this to find out where this equivalent expression is going to touch the x-axis which is using that bottom part right there. 3x minus 18 equals zero. Okay, negative 18 equals, well, 18 equals six times three. So negative 18 is going to equal negative six times positive three or the other way around, but negative, ah, 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 yeah. Or, don't jump, Barb. Six times negative three, which since we're looking for a plus three, is gonna be what I wanna use. Six plus negative three equals positive three. So, okay, so positive six and negative three. Now we solve for X. X plus six equals zero. X minus three equals zero. We subtract six, subtract six. X 
equals negative 6, add 3, add 3, x equals 3. Okay, now, we never graphed the change and that will help a lot. That's a mess. Clear, clear. Okay, x squared plus 3x minus 18. And I'm going to graph it. Zoom 6. Okay, now this is the equivalent expression right there. And you can see, well, that's right, I was gonna put it over here and mark it up. Woo. Now, this is above or on. Is it above or on? Yeah. Above. Or on. The x-axis here and here. And we're told that this point is negative six on the x-axis. This point is three on the x-axis. And so our solution to this inequality is going to be, well, here, let me do this. negative infinity to negative six, parenthesis, bracket, because we're actually touching, unioned up with bracket three to infinity. And that's what I would put in my x-axis, uh, my x-axis, my answer box. But am I sure that that would also be the answer to this? Yes, I am. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. That's the x-coordinate of the point of intersection. All the way out to the left forever and positive one, two, three, that's the x-coordinate of the point of intersection. So that's gonna be bracket three, and then going out to the right forever. So the same interval, but much easier to find when you have a zero there. So let me make this smaller and see now, do you want to discuss this before we go on? No, okay. Here we've got a cubic.
We've got 3x to the... Th I always do that. So I should just accept it. 3x to the third minus 7x squared is less than or equal to 20x. Meaning, you already know this, but it's nice to have someone repeat it. Y equals x to the third minus 7x squared is below or on, below, below or touching the line Y equals 20X. That's what this means. But we also saw how it's easier to create an equivalent inequality that's easier to solve that has a zero on one side or the other. So we can do this. We can take 3x to the third minus 7x squared, leave a little space, less than or equal to 20x, and then I can subtract 20x from both sides of the inequality. So that I now have 3x to the third minus 7x squared minus 20x is below or on the x-axis. And these are usually easier to solve. No promises, but usually. Okay. So now let's graph that. Or did I already? No, didn't. Didn't graph anything. Getting lazy, Barbara. All right, here we go. 3x to the third minus 7x squared minus 20x. Okay. Right, that's what we're doing now. Graph. Okay. There's our graph in its raw form. I want to make it more visible, so I'm going to change the x-axis settings. Let's see, this is negative 1, negative 2. I'm going to choose negative 3 on the left and 1, 2, 3, four, five, and five on the right. Negative three to five. And let's bring the Y distance down. The reason being, I want to try to improve what this looks like. It looks to me like the graph comes down and crosses at x equals zero, but I would really, really like to get a closer look. Okay, so here's the radical thing I'm going to do. I am going to, the thing is, do I really need to do that? Yes. I do, okay. Um, I am going to change 
I just want to look at this. I want to look at it and get a clear, clear look at it. I'm going to change the uh, uh, the X axis settings from uh, from what they are right now to negative one half on the left to positive one half on the right, and then ch change the Y settings to one one below, which is negative one to one above, which is positive one, just to get a good look. So negative 0.5 and positive 0.5 and negative one and positive one. There. That's what I wanted to see. This is the Y axis. This is the X axis. And you do have a clean cut right there through what looks for all the world like X equals zero and Y equals zero, the point zero zero. So I would bet that that happens. Of course, we have to solve this now to find out for sure. So I am going to go back to where I was before, um, which was what? Negative three to five. Um, oh, what does that look like? Yeah, you can't see it. Now I am, yeah, I'm just going to do zoom six. Because we have a pretty good idea now. So now we get a picture of it. Pull that out. All right, so let's look at this. This is a cubic, which means that, let's consider the end, okay. Let's consider the end behavior of a cubic goes down on the left and up on the right. So what's happening here is this is going down, 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 and up, 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 and curving and coming down. And curving way down, up, and coming back up. And here's where the graph is touching the x-axis. So now we're ready. We're ready to look for less than or equal to, or uh, below or touching. Okay, so this, this is below, this is touching, this is the part of the x-axis that goes with that,
And here we have touching, touching, and going below, below, turning around, staying below until it gets here. So we're going to have bracket, bracket, and this part of the x-axis. All we have to do is calculate for sure, not depend on what things look like, but calculate for sure what this point is, what that point is, and what that point is. So that's what we're going to do now. So, why don't I come over here? Right. We're going to work on 3x to the third minus 7x squared minus 20x equals zero. Okay, to find this point, this point, and this point. I could take a guess, how about negative two, zero, and one, two, three, four, four, maybe? But that's not good enough. I've got to know. Okay, so I factor out an X because there's a GCF, which is X. X times three X squared minus seven X minus 20 equals zero. And so this is a factor and this is a factor. You set your factors equal to zero. That proves that that's a zero. Zero is a zero. <gasps> and then three X squared minus seven X minus 20 equals zero. So now, we can factor this by, by the AC method, or we can factor by the, by the quadrat with the quadratic formula. And I honestly think it might be easier, maybe it wouldn't be. So A equals three, B equals negative seven and C equals negative 20 and X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four A minus four AC all over two A. So X equals negative, negative seven, plus or minus the square root of parentheses, negative seven squared, minus four times three, times negative 20. All over, two times three. Hmm, okay. Calculator. All right, here we go. Now, all I wanna do is calculate this. So parentheses negative seven, parentheses closed, squared minus four times three times negative 20. Double check. Okay. 289. So X equals seven plus or minus the square root 
of 289 over 6. Let's see if 289 is a perfect square. Oh, pain. There. Okay. Second x squared. 289. Enter. 17. So x is going to equal 7 plus or minus 17 over 6. Okay, so seven, oh, x equals seven minus 17 over six, and x equals seven plus 17 over six. So x equals negative 10, over six, x equals negative five thirds. You can always do that with math frac. Um, x equals 24 over six, which is four. So this should B, this should provide me with points, negative five-thirds, right here. See, I was wrong. I would have guessed negative two, and it would be wrong. That's almost all the way to negative, negative two, but not quite. All right, negative five-thirds. zero and four. All right, now I'm ready to write my solution. This will be negative infinity to negative five thirds bracket union bracket zero comma four bracket. And that is where the graph is under the x-axis or touching the x-axis. Some of these can be a little more elaborate than the others. Want to discuss it? <sighs> okay. And we can just keep rambling. Or we could do another cubic, because I think they're harder. Yeah. Not super hard, but harder. Oh, and this is a strict inequality. So I'm going to have to use parentheses. X to the third minus three X squared is less than six X or below six X minus eight. And then let's just move everything over. Um, 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 minus 6x, minus 6x, plus 8, 
plus 8. So minus 6x minus 6x, that's 0. Minus 8 plus 8, that's 0. And we have them over here. So we're going to be looking at x to the third minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8 is below the x-axis. So let's take a look at what that means. Okay, x caret 3, come down, minus 3, x squared minus 6x plus 8. Graph. Woo, that is beautiful! I mean, that is just gorgeous. Let's go a little higher. and just a little lower. That is gorgeous. That is a typical cubic polynomial, the graph of a typical cubic polynomial. I love it. I've always thought those graphs are just the most beautiful graphs. Until you get to trigonometry. If any of you are thinking of taking trig, you make the most beautiful graphs when you get to trig. They're just awesome. Okay, so here is what we're dealing with now. And what are we being asked? We're being asked below, below, below the x-axis. Where is our polynomial below the x-axis. Okay. So this time, we have an open circle. And below. And open circle. Open circle. Below. That's what we're going to be finding. That is, we're going to be finding this part of the x-axis and this part of the x-axis. So we'll be using parentheses. And now all we need to do is this, negative infinity. Ugh, I can't believe I did that. Okay. Negative infinity, comma, we don't know. Unioned up with, we're not sure, probably one. One, two, three, four. Four, uh-uh-uh, I don't know that. So. That's what our answer is going to look like. So let's be for finding it. X cubed 
minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8. Oh, my hopes are dashed. Look at that. I was really hoping we could just factor this by grouping. But if I pull a 2 out of here, I'll have 3x plus, well, I would pull out a negative 2, but it would be 3x plus uh, minus 4. Um, and there's no 4 over here. So no, we can't use grouping on this. Dog. Okay. So what are we going to do now? All is lost. No, it's not. We're going to take x to the third minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals zero, and we're going to use the rational zeros theorem. We're going to use P over Q. Where to help you review in case you slept over the weekend. And of course, there is that problem that I neglected to put up the video, but it's ready to go up now. Thank you to the person who told me about that. Um, so it's my fault. Um, um, anyway, back, back to P over Q. P is the set of all the factors of eight, the, the constant at the end. So that would be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, and plus or minus eight. Those are all the integer factors of eight. Uh, Q is all the integer factors of the leading coefficient, which here is just one, which does make it easier though, because what we're going to do now is find all the possible rational zeros more than we could ever use. All possible rational zeros are the set of P over Q, but Q is one. So what is one over one? One. What is two over one? Two. What is four over one? Four. What is eight over one? Eight. So when your leading coefficient is just a one, you kind of luck out. Plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, and plus or minus eight. And so our job is going to be to look at these crossing points. Maybe we could see them better here. And pick one, pick one that looks like it's in here. Well, actually, they all look like th like it's in there. They all look like they are in there and they may well be. But let's see, let's pick an easy one. How about maybe one? And I am going to do a synthetic division with one. I put one in the backward L. And then I'm going to take the coefficients of this cubic polynomial, one, negative three, negative six, 
and 8. And then skip this line and draw a line down here an equals bar. Then whatever this first number is, I bring it directly down. And I use that number to multiply by that number. One times one is one. Negative three plus one is negative two. Negative two times one is negative two. Negative six plus negative two is negative eight. Negative eight times positive one is negative eight. And eight plus negative eight is zero. Now, everybody who remembers what we talked about last week knows that this is the best thing that could happen. Woo! It means that one is a zero of this polynomial. X to the third minus three X squared minus six X plus eight. What we're left with, this was a third degree polynomial. After you do synthetic division once, the quotient, what you get when you divide, is a degree less. So this is X squared minus two X minus eight. That's the quotient. And what I'll do now is I'm going to set this equal to zero and solve for X, and that will give me the other two zeros. So X squared minus 2X minus 8 equals zero. And negative 8 is negative 4 times positive 2. And negative 4 plus positive 2 is negative 2. Okay, so boom, 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 boom equals zero. X, X minus four plus two. And then we solve each of these for X. Add four, add four, X equals four. And what do you know? Minus two, minus two, X equals negative two, which means This time my guess was correct. That's negative two. This is one and this is four. That's the problem with guesses. You never know when you're gonna guess right and when you're gonna guess wrong. All right, now we can finish up our solution. Negative two is going to go here. One goes there, four goes here. Let me see, that's a one. Cute, very cute, Barbara. All right, we have done this. We have conquered. We have mastered 
polynomial inequalities. Questions? None. Well, there's one more. This one. And I could do that, but this one, I think. It's just like that one. So I would vote. That we call an end to class. And all of us go have a rollicking good day. Well, maybe I'll have a rollicking good day and you do your homework. Meanwhile, what we did here is in the video I did not put up on Thursday. So I am about to take that video and stick it up on YouTube after which I will stick it into module 12. Uh, this is module 13. It's the 13th week. You have two more weeks of studying new material and then comes the final exam. Anybody who wants to make up those practice exams and or real exams has got to do that by April 30th. And that's a school wide rule. then you totally put your focus on the final exam. Unless you want to take it early. OK, uh, bye. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. You too. Have a good day. Yes, Bye. thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.